Hey guys, how's it going? Joey here with another patch rundown video. Today we're just going to be looking at the 14.6 changes. Honestly, there are some pretty big changes to bot lane role uh, with the crit changes that are coming through and support income changes that are coming through. Uh, so it probably will shake up the meta at least a little bit. Maybe not as much in solo queue. People will probably still just play the champions they like to play in solo queue, but pro player will probably get affected by this. But I don't think 14.6 I think is MSI patch or 14.7 is MSI patch. So won't really see these changes for a while in pro play, but let's get into it. First of all, I think is a Briar change. Briar can now jump two wards with the Q, but everything else is kind of nerfed slightly. I think it's probably like competition nerfs for this being something that's good, because uh, I assume this is just basically giving her a ward hop. I don't really know Briar that well as a champion. Great start. Uh, but yeah, they are just nerfing the bonus attack speed, uh, the healing, and then the R damage by a little bit at the looter ranks and stuff like that, just to kind of bring her down a little bit. Um, completely fine with that. Cho'Gath is getting a W cooldown decrease and E damage increase. Cho'Gath really not that meta as a champion right now. Um, two seconds is kind of a lot, especially since I think you were maxing Q in most lanes. So she's a free two seconds overall. And then just the free E damage also feels kind of good. I mean, it's not like insanely affected until you actually put points into it. Um, and even then it's not really like a massive buff or anything. Just a small buff probably won't change show got too much of the champion. This is the much bigger buff because uh, you're now able to get basically two of these per wave rather than, well, you'd get two kind of, but it's like kind of hard to always get two, but the cooldown feels a little bit better for sure on that. Diana has some attack speed changes to both her base stats and passive, um, as well as the passive lasting longer. This is overall just going to be a pretty good buff to Diana clear speed uh, as the a bonus attack speed is now tripled for five seconds rather than for three seconds which feels great as well as there's now linear scaling but it's a little bit weaker in the scaling so every third level it'll be a nerf but everything in between will be a buff if that makes sense but it's not really like that much change anyway and you're getting two extra seconds on the attack speed so overall diana jungle should be feeling a lot better i don't think this affects lane diana as much but diana jungle clear speed is going to get pretty buffed by it so feels good uh, here's one of the bigger champion changes that they're doing. They're changing Galio back to kind of what he was in his old state a little bit with how his passive worked. Uh, your passive now reduces cooldown when gets hit by when you're hitting enemy champions or epic monsters with abilities. Um, and it's three seconds. I think in the past it used to be four seconds. Uh, they're making you have bonus attack speed while you're using it. And then they're also nerfing the overall damage of the ability and scaling of it or of the passive. Um, and it can also now trigger spell effects. So I'm pretty sure that's like... Lichbane, or not Lichbane, uh, like Ludens and stuff like that, um, and Leandres, which is cool. Uh, they're basically making it so you have to use your combo more fluidly with your passives weaving them in and stuff like that. You're getting more damage from this, even though it's doing less damage now, you'll get more passive autos during fights and stuff like that. You just have to properly weave your abilities. And then they're nerfing other parts of his kit to compensate for that. They're nerfing the AP scaling on this, but they're giving it a little bit better cooldown when you put points into it, which feels great. They're nerfing the overall W shield, unless you have, uh, but putting it back into percent bonus health rather than just being into AP and magic resist, uh, which is great. The E buff to minion damage will feel kind of nice, I guess. I mean, if you're using E to wave clear as Galio, it is what it is anyway but they are just nerfing the overall damage. Uh, I think that's because this buff is so big to his overall damage with you actually getting more passive autos in uh, that they needed to put small nerfs to the other abilities. Uh, Gragas nerfs, kind of reasonable. Gragas was a little bit overtuned after the change in runes um, systems where HP is very common or everyone gets like a much more higher base early game HP. So champions with HP scalings were stronger and Gragas having that in his passive made him pretty impressive in laning phase. So they are decreasing his base health by 30, which is actually an effective a decent amount. Also the, uh, the Q mana cost affects it a lot too, especially since you are most of the time playing top lane Gragas and you aren't building too heavily into mana items. Um, Tank Gragas doesn't really want to be building these things, but AP Gragas won't really get affected by this. This is just mostly a nerf to Gragas top. Uh, Karma changes, they have decided Karma is too broken of a mid laner and not strong enough as a support or like an okay support, but a bad, like too OP of a mid. So they're trying to change Karma to be a little bit more of a support or more support orientated and less just like an OP mid laner. Um, they're doing that by changing the mana growth, like more mana regen, uh, less cooldown back from passive. I mean, this was insane. If you RQ'd somebody, you hit tw two abilities, you have RQ for next one or Mancha for next Q. 
they're making a way higher mana increase when you put points into Q. Um, and then they're buffing the mantra shield, which is like kind of the big thing. The nerf stick will end up, and I don't think really matter too much. Uh, maybe it does with uh, the break points for when you're actually getting your ability back from passive. Uh, but I would have to kind of play the champion to like feel and see. But they're making our mantra shield a lot stronger in early game, um, which I guess is a good support change. Uh, so we'll see. They're changing Kane a little bit. They're making the, the Q is less, they're more damage. And then you can't use like Tiamat actives and stuff like that while you are in Q animation, which is kind of nice because there was like the overlap double effect of like you can Q profile Hydra and stuff like that for just like a massive burst on one, one like instance. Um, so kind of happy with that. I don't like play versus Kane, so I'm always down for Kane nurse. And then uh, Kane shadow, uh, Blue cane or damage is decreased. Orn buff, I mean, Orn's getting a new skin uh, for April Fools, which actually looks like a pretty sick skin. If you guys haven't checked it out, I recommend checking it out. But yeah, they are nerfing or buffing Orn E uh, to boost skin sales as you do, as you do. Although I do kind of like tanks getting buffed in solo queue. I think that if you are willing to play tanks in solo queue, you do deserve a higher win rate because they're kind of miserable if you're not, because you're kind of just playing for the team. And tanks really aren't that common in solo queue, I feel like. A lot of people would rather just play damage champions and stuff like that. I do kind of really like front to back team fight style uh, coming from pro play and stuff like that. You don't really get the same vibe around objectives that you do in solo queue. It's even competitive, which kind of sucks. I think it's really fun to have like those like front to back 5v5 dragon standoffs where it's like better tank wins better carries win now it's like oh this guy got picked before soul free soul and it's like well that was boring uh w bug fix for rexai as well as his r being feeling better for casting uh her feeling better for her casting the uh like out of range ulti so not really too big of a change i mean rexai was super bugged when they first change the kit and then they fix some of the bugs and they're fixing more of the bugs so the win rate should start to like more normalize uh Senna change is the bipolar riot games for how they want to treat Senna. uh every once in a while they decide that they want her to be more of an 80 carry every once in a while they decide they don't want her to be an 80 carry um so they're shifting her back to not an 80 carry um they did nerf her a couple of times before this for support and ad carry with the q healing nerf and the q damage nerf twice now um but they just decided hey no more csing senna it's just too strong or the soul rate for csing senna is too strong too high of a win rate we want to be shifting her back into the support role they've changed this maybe four or five times now um not entirely sure why they keep fixing it or changing it or what they want um but yeah, I mean, she's going back to not being very much played in AD carry role because I actually think she is one of the highest winner AD carries right now, which shouldn't exist. I do agree with Riot that she should be kind of played AD carry or be able to play AD carry, but it shouldn't be her main role. She should never have a higher win rate in AD carry than she does support. And I think she actually does right now, if I remember the numbers correctly. But I mean, she's always had a very high win rate for support. It's like dealing with peanuts here. It's like she has a 54% winner with support, but a 55% winner with AD carry. It's like feels probably good to nerf it a little bit so i mean it's fine um is what it is bring back center support hopefully they will stop nerfing her uh because i really do enjoy playing the champion uh i mean it's a small nerf to support center too but not not really at all uh passive cooldown adjusted for shen similar to the diana change they're making it linear scaling on the brick points for levels and a buff from 2 to 17 and feels best at 8 to 16. cool uh they're changing scion ad scaling <laughs> the boss very happy about this one uh and then the w shielding is increased with percent max health but you get so much max health from scion passive anyway this is just going to end up overall being just a buff at basically every break point um well not early game break points but once you get a decent amount of hp this is just a strict buff to it um but yeah they're nerfing they're buffing the uh ad ratio um by five percent on the base q minimum damage but since that actually can quadruple it actually goes up by no triple it can triple so it's actually a 15 percent buff at max charge q um which is pretty decent uh he already did a lot when he had ad on him so yeah feels cool i guess uh they're changing smolder like <sighs> They, Riot releases champions and then they're strong or make them strong and then they just nerf them out of existence. I don't think this is like the most insane change for Smolder, but they're changing it. So before Smolder was the amount of burn is locked and the execute is what's going up. Now they've fully changed Smolder where the burn is scaling, but the execute is going to be a stuck threshold at 6.5%. So the Elder Dragon part, the Smite part, 
where you just execute somebody from like 12% HP because they have infinite stacks is just gone now. It's just 6.5%, but the burn is stronger. Um, and they're making the execute conditions around that a little bit different. Uh, they're also changing the W missile range, but I mean, this ability was very hard to miss to begin with. And then the E movement speed, uh, just bringing down Smolder a little bit. I think the... It is a bit of a hit to Smolder. I don't think the champion's like dead dead. I think I would like Smolder to be more reliant on stacks and making later game breakpoints. I think you can get the 225 stacks too early into the game if you're winning or in most situations, if you're not punished or anything like that. I think that was kind of what I didn't like about Smolder. I think I like having the scaling execute. I like the champion being some like late game beast that like, oh, we have to kill Smolder or we just lose the game. I think it hit the breakpoint too early and that's why it was OP to me or like why I didn't like playing versus Smolder. But I think just nerfing out the execute outright doesn't really feel like a good change to me. I mean, it is a good change. The champion is nerfed. It was too strong. But I feel like they could have approached this in different ways that would kind of feel better, but maybe not better for Smolder. I would just like it to be stronger. I want it to be stronger later rather than getting its late game power spike in the mid game. And that, that's just my take on it. Um, I do like infinitely scaling champions. I think they're really cool. I think the concept of Smolder was very cool. Um, so we'll see. I mean, it'll probably drop a decent amount of win rate from this and not really be the most pickable champion definitely not a blindable champion just because of how the early game is but still probably fine to be played trindamir attack speed growth feels good for trindamir uh i think they nerfed trindamir a while ago uh, so they're giving him back something volibear q bonus movement speed is decreased and our cooldown is increased the volibear is a little bit too strong for the buff that they gave it so i think they split the difference i think this was originally like 160 or something like that and this was a little bit worse before the buff so now they're just bringing it like over buff, bring it down a little bit. Completely fine. I think Riot does this from time to times where they buff a champion a little bit too much and then they take back half of what they buffed. Um, and I think it's a very good way to do it. I think they can get a better read for the champion. I think it's completely fine. It's like, hey, we made a mistake, a little bit of over buff. We're just going to bring it down a little bit. I'd love to see that. Now we're going to the big meat of the patch and that's the item changes. Um, like there are some very, pretty interesting champion changes, I would say, but I think the real majority of this patch is through the item changes to support and AD carry, uh, at least for me. They're buffing IE, which is going to be very interesting to how this affects the meta. 10% uh, extra damage on critical damage is it's going to be quite interesting, honestly. Uh, I don't really know how to phrase it. I want to see how the AD carry meta shapes up around this. Lethality AD carries have been very strong, especially in solo queue uh, for the past couple of patches. So this is going to bring crit AD carries to the forefront. Um, and see how that is. I mean, the crit AD carries already did feel very good, but the change to Static Shiv, Static Shiv being a 2700 gold item, as well as giving you wave clear and solo queue was really, really insane. So now you're going to get your two item spike very early with Static Shiv and Infinity Edge, as well as your Infinity Edge spike is going to be even stronger. Um, so I'm actually very curious how this will shake up because I think Static Shiv was already changing the meta towards crit AD carries, and this is going to shift it even more. Uh, they're doing a 580 nerf to Navori. I think they just don't want Navori to get super overshadowed by Infinity Edge. Um, because some AD carries that Nefori were good on, uh, people are still building Infinity Edge. Like, people build Infinity Edge on Zarya and Lucian sometimes against uh, squishy champions rather than building Nefori, which are, like, historically good items for these champions. Uh, the armor penetration up 5% and 5% here. I mean, I don't really feel like this was an issue. I don't think tanks were a big problem. Honestly, the big value of Lord Dominic's regard is the uh, Giant Slayer passive to me. And the armor pen is, like, the bonus. Well, it's the other way, but... I feel like LDR was already a very strong item versus killing tanks to begin with. A little bit of a buff, that's fine. Uh, they are making early Doran changes to junglers. You will no longer be able to purchase it if you have purchased World's Atlas, Rune Compass, or uh, Moss Sumper, the jungle items. Basically, they don't want junglers and supports to be building Doran's items. Very reasonable. The Doran's items aren't made for them. Very common in jungle meta to buy Doran's on your first reset. Very common in support meta right now to buy Doran's on both, like to start the game. Try to go for first blood and then buy support item. I think it was kind of toxic to the game's health. I don't think that's how the game was intended to be played. It was just like a, a meta break and stuff like that. Um, even then, it's just like very weird because sometimes you wouldn't really get any value from it. Or if you didn't get value, then it felt really bad. It was a very high vis, high reward. Um, fine change, good change to me. I don't think the orange should have been built on those champions. Well, I mean, it should because it was broken because they overbuffed the orange, but yeah. And then they're also changing early income for supports. They've decided that 
Supports get too much gold. Who would have guessed? I mean, I supports always were getting too much gold. This was for like the past like four seasons. We, we, I, way too much. I remember when gold items didn't really exist for support and you'd just be happy getting your hinge of gold sidestone um, and you didn't really get to play the game. But now we get so much gold, but they're nerfing that by a decent amount. Uh, which is fine. I kind of want to see how it feels. Um, they're nerfing that, but they're also nerfing the amount of gold required for the upgrade, uh, which just overall, you're taking 200 gold from supports at the end cap of your uh, site zone, but you're also reducing the rate at which they get this. This honestly might be an over nerf. I think it might be hard for supports to get their first item, but we'll see how it feels and see how it shakes out. I do think it was a little OP that you are getting your first item so early because of Rune and Compass. And then on top of that, you are getting like a second item with uh, Zoxoc Zoc or with Bloodsong um, and these strong damage items. It feels like if you got ahead of support, that mid game, mid early mid game spike where like 14, 15 minutes where you get first item and you have your upgraded support item, you did kind of feel a little bit overpowered compared to other champions, especially if you were ahead. It's like, why is it fair that this champion gets two items for the price of one? Um, so I do kind of agree that the supports were a little bit too strong in that. I'm curious to see if this is too much of an over nerf and how long it will actually take supports to get these items. It does mean you have to be a little bit more uh, conscious about what you're getting first item. I think in the past, it didn't really matter what item you wanted for first item for support. Nothing was too expensive. You could just buy whatever you wanted because, I mean, you just had so much gold income to begin with. That everything was fine. You could just buy anything if you wanted uh, as your first item. But now with this change, it feels like you have to be a little bit more specific on the item you want. Um, and actually take into consideration how much gold it's actually going to take and how long you're actually going to be to get that spike. Um, I left the changes on. They're changing the gold per minion kill and damage and stuff like that of hitting it. And that's just the overall just change. You will just be getting these later and kindling red Dorans. They are also nerfing souls to slay again. Yeah, that's fine moving on with our lives they're doing a bunch of changes to the epic items in the game uh which is also a very big change and should kind of shift the meta i assume a little bit uh maybe not maybe not we'll see uh the big one i think is actually this first one the bomby cinder one i think bomby cinder was broken compared to its upgraded components for a very long time well since season 14 so they are nerfing it now where the difference between uh bonus hp between bomby cinder and uh is it Undying Despair? No, Undying Despair is the other one. But the, the AP, the Magic Wizard Sunfire item and Sunfire is like a bigger gap now, so it actually feels a lot more incentivized to actually upgrade it because the damage increase is actually a lot more. Um, but before it was like you're really just buying a small damage increase and like no stats that you can just be building to better items. So they are making that a little bit better in turn where upgrading it should feel a little bit better. They're nerfing cod filled AD, they're nerfing ability haste on or ability power on Phoenix Codex. They're making Glacial Buckler 50 gold more expensive. Uh, overall, just a lot of nerf to the epic items in general. Hexic Alternator getting another hit. This item has been getting hit by so many patches, which is weird it's getting hit now, but it is more broken. And maybe not more broken. I think it has better build pass now. But this item was super turbo broken in season 13. Um, damage. They're overall just taking like a lot of damage out of the early game. Like all these are early game items. When you hit the spikes, they're still going to be giving you the same amount of ability, a power, or attack damage, or lethality. It's just an early game. You are just getting a nerf, so you are going to be weaker in early game compared to when you actually complete your items. So completed items will feel stronger. Um, it's not a big amount. I mean, some of them are big amounts, but just overall change and stuff like that uh spectre scal they giving it passive health and removing the passive um five lethality or three lethality off brutalizer tunneler a bit more expensive this might change jungle better a little bit for and barrier being changed uh i i i mean the fact that they're nerfing all archetypes for this is kind of nice it's not like one role is just getting hit just epic items overall are getting hit um which is pretty interesting I would say for the overall patch, uh, the big things like I said to be taking accounts is probably just the crit items, the support gold income items, and I don't really know with the buffs. I don't think anything's really like going to be super broken with the buffs to the champions. I think just the nerfs are just interesting. I think Diana jungle might be pretty strong. Um, or not really gonna like, I don't think this changes Orin, you know? I mean, maybe for Cho'Gath it changes something, but not really that much. I think Galio might become a little bit more better depending on if the nerf was actually or the buff was actually good. Have to see with time. Um, 
and none of these champions. Maybe Karma just played less mid lane, which is more of like a competitive thing. I don't think people were playing that much Karma mid and solo queue. Smolder getting nerfed feels great. Uh, I think overtuned, Senna being nerfed, not really that big of a change. Realistically, it's not changing too much of the champions that are being played. I think the bigger changes are the epic items and just the overall item changes, system changes with Dorans. This is going to change Bruiser, junglers, and stuff like that. Like these uh, changes to the systems with items is a bigger effect than all of the AD carries. Uh, all of the buffs and nerfs that actually happened. Um, so this will definitely impact the meta a lot more. You can't really see everything. If you guys did enjoy the patch highlight or rundown, I do appreciate it. If you guys want to like, comment, subscribe, I also do appreciate it. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Um, hopefully I'll be able to be uploading a little bit more. Have a nice day. Bye.